Chapter 10. Oh no, he must have gone out again, Charles said. But how? Dad had fixed the hole in the fence. <laughs> then Charles noticed the gate near the side of the house that was hanging open. Look, that gate must definitely shut, he said. Flash must have figured how to push it open. Oh no, said Becky. We gotta find him quick. Said Stephanie. You, Sammy, and Becky go towards Elm Street. Lizzie said to Charles, We'll move towards Maple. Charles didn't even pause to glare at Lizzie for being bossy. She was right. They had to find Flash right away. He'd get hurt out on the dangerous streets. He ran for the gate. Flash! Charles yelled. Becky was the fastest runner. She dashed through the gate and disappeared around the corner of the house. The others followed after her. 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 Charles ran around the corner and he saw Becky and a woman leaning over Flash. Flash, who was lying on the sidewalk. Charles groaned. All of a sudden he felt dizzy and faint. Flash was hurt! It was partly his fault for not watching more closely, but he should keep a hard eye on a dog like Flash. He was so quick and smart he could escape anywhere. It's okay, ma'am, Becky called. He was just saying hello. Sure there weren't any cars close by. They were lucky this time. Time. When Charles got close enough, he could see Flash was going on his back, grinning up at Becky in the moment. What a gorgeous dog, said the woman, rubbing Flash's belly as she stood up again. And I was just walking by when he ran up right to me and rolled over for a tummy rub. Charles went on a big sigh of relief. Well, I guess he's not as shy as he used to be, he tried to smile. Flash really needs a home where he'll be safe, Mom said later that night as they were sitting down to a dinner with Sonia and Salad. If they could find one very soon, I think we'll have to take him over to Karen Paws. That was the animal shelter that Lizzie volunteered at. It was not a bad place, but Charles would have hated to think of Flash walked up all day in one of those cages. We'll find something, Becky promised. She looked over at Charles. He knew what he w she was thinking. They had to solve the mystery of where Flash belonged. The sooner the better. After dinner, the cousins settled into the living room to watch their movie. The tired out... Flash laid with his head out on Stephanie's knee and Buddy settled in Charles' lap. Lap. Lizzie put Babe on and before long everybody was swept up the story about the adorable little pig who was brought up by a loving border collie. Look, Flash, that doggy kind of looks like you, Stephanie said. She gave the little dog a kiss on the head. Flash thumped his tail. When the movie was over... Over, the cousins went into the kitchen with ice cream. I wish Flash could live on a farm, Charles says he got out the chocolate sauce in the fridge. Then you could herd sheep like the dogs in the movie. Those silly sheep remind me of the Barclay sheep. They're always getting out. They could sure use some herding. Steph was scooping some vanilla fudge into her bowl. The Barclays? Where do they live? Lizzie asked. Right up the road, said Becky, as she reached for the chocolate sauce. You know, that house that looks just like ours. People are always getting lost and knocking on our door by mistake when they really want to be at the borrow place. place. <coughs> Charles stared at Becky. What do you just say? He put his spoon down. Becky laughed. <laughs> that the Barclays house looks like ours, she asked. So? She suddenly felt her eyes went up. Oh, wow! 
she said, she put a hand over her mouth. That's it! Murray and his wife must have meant to leave Flash at the Bartle Place farm instead of bars. The mystery was solved, and the next day, instead of going to the mall, the Petersons and their cousins headed back to the country, taking Flash to the home where he was meant for. Instead of turning right to to Uncle Stephen's place, Dad drove up to the right-hand fork of the farm at the other end of the road. This one had an old farmhouse and an old barn like Stephanie and Becky's. There was a cow in the pasture and some geese in the grass. Dad had to swerve almost all the way when a flock of sheep came trotting up to meet the band. When they pulled out of the farm, Charles opened the band door and Flash jumped out as soon as he knew he was home. He dashed towards the sheep, chasing them back and forth. We got got to get him, Mr. Barclay yelled, laughing out loud as he saw the sleek dog run. Mr. Barclay turned out to be a tall, smiling man who looked a lot like Mr. Hoggett from Babe. His wife was thrilled to meet Flash. He said that Murray and Dot called them on Friday. They had to make sure Flash was happy living there. Since they kind of frankly figured out where their dog has gone. I can't believe it, Mr. Barclay said for the fourth time, looking down at Flash. Flash, I've been calling everywhere, looking for a lost little dog. I never would imagine that Dot and Murray would have left him off at your place instead of mine. When we called your place, nobody answered. Dad was shaking his head. Charles hoped he was going to start lecturing about how the cousins should have not kept secrets from their parents. Aunt Stephen, Uncle Stephen and Aunt Abigail had been out of town for the weekend, so they weren't there to talk to the Barwood Clays. But everything worked just fine in the end. Becky gave Charles a high five. Yeah, we solved the mystery, she said. I'm sure you did. Flash is a beauty, said Mrs. Barclay. We had border collies, but her last one died six months ago. We really need a dog to help us with our sheep. That's when Flash moved. Little did we know, Murray and Dot would have to leave so suddenly. Stephanie knelt down to hug Flash. Charles thought she looked really sad. Of course, kids. You're welcome to come and visit him every time, Mr. Barclay said. He must have noticed Stephanie's face. I'll be training him to herd the sheep, but he'll want to play too. Stephanie smiled, looking happy already. Uh, uh, I, I'd like to teach him how to do agility, she said. Have you ever heard of it? Heard of it, said Mrs. Barclay. Oh my gosh, I love it. Our last dog was a champion. Want to help me train Flash? I still have lots of equipment put away in our barn. Really? Stephanie asked. Her face lit up with joy. Charles had a feeling that she was going to be a lot happier living in the country from now on. So what if there weren't any stories? If she had a dog to play with, even if it wasn't hers, Stephanie would miss them all. And maybe someday she and Becky would get a little dog. Of their own. And once Uncle Stephen saw how responsible both could be, be, not only was the mystery solved, but Flash had a wonderful home where he could run and play safely. Plus, he had a job. Just what Becky and Stephanie could see him do every day. And Charles and Lizzie could see them whenever they visited their cousins. The Petersons had helped another puppy find his perfect place. Wasn't that such a nice story? I liked it. I'm gonna grab our next story. <laughs> the Nobilization of Femalina, coming May 11th, which is my last day of school.